Hi, it's Ed Johnawak on behalf of TEC, and I want to talk about blower selection today. This is something that as of late, and well, maybe even take it back a, a little bit longer than just as of late, I see people get stuck on nominal numbers. And before I get into a, a long tirade about the lost art of blower selection, we got to address what nominal numbers are. If you find yourself talking about equipment, air conditioning equipment, in tons, such as a two or a three or a four ton unit, well, that's the way I speak about it too. But when it comes to system design, I will look more closely than just its nominal capacity. I wanna know how many sensible BTUs it creates or more specifically removes and the same goes for its latent capacity or how much water it has the ability to remove from the air. The system's airflow is going to have a direct impact on its ability to remove water from the air. Or you'll hear it referred to as the system's sensible heat ratio, which is a ratio showing us what percentage of our system's actual capacity is dropping the temperature of the air removing sensible BTUs or pulling water out of the air, removing latent BTUs. We get stuck sometimes on those nominal numbers when it comes to selecting blowers. Before I go any further, I wanna make sure that everybody's on the same page with terminology. Uh, that's a blower and uh, it's a pretty fancy blower because if you watch it, it's it's going to rock a little bit, I assume. Yep, there it goes. And it starts up. That's a very specific kind of blower or fan or drive, right? They're the most common words we use to describe the fan that we'll see inside of a furnace. And that's probably the last time you'll hear me call it a fan. I'm going to most likely call it a drive because generally when you do blower selection, there you go, I used a different term, on a fan coil, often called an air handler, or on a furnace, we can select different BTU capacity and a different size drive. So the idea that I see far too often, and let's just arbitrarily pick a three ton air conditioner, someone will install a furnace that has a three ton drive to match the three ton capacity of the air conditioner. And at least in my market, that's almost always wrong. Simply put, a three ton drive in the middle of its fan curve will generally give us its nominal airflow. Well, what does that mean? Well, that simply means that a three ton drive in a furnace will generally give us 1200 CFM at a half inch of external static pressure. That is a rule of thumb, and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. But in modern equipment, when we add a evaporator coil, as well as some kind of accessory filter, we start to see the requirement for our external static pressure to be greater than 0.5. So it's not at all uncommon to see a new furnace get installed that right out of the box has too small of a blower. Now, are there things that we can do to compensate for that? Absolutely. Uh, we have a couple videos that you can learn more about external static pressure, and it will elaborate on this topic. But I want to stick to some basic information in, in this video, and let's cover some... Mm, rules of thumb or some misnomers, or maybe a little bit of both. First, we're gonna talk about what kinds of blowers or drives are available to us. Uh, modern furnaces, modern air handlers, we have uh, the standard induction motors, permanent split capacitor motors. They're in our rear view mirror. They're just not a thing anymore. DOE made a rule change. Uh, summer of 19, I believe it was, and motors had to get more efficient. And luckily we had ECM or electronically commutated motor technology available to us. So this wasn't really a big deal in the grand scheme of things, or at least in my opinion, it wasn't a big deal. 
So you might see an existing piece of equipment that has a PSC motor, but anything moving forward is either going to have a constant torque ECM or a constant airflow ECM. And I think it's important to bring these two to light because often people refer to these motors as ECM and they don't elaborate. And you have to because a constant airflow ECM, which was often referred to as a variable speed ECM or just an ECM, as the name implies, constant airflow and as our chart shows, as our external static pressure goes up or resistance to airflow goes up, the airflow remains constant. And that's done by adding more torque and RPM to the motor shaft, and it will deliver that constant airflow to a, a pretty substantial external static pressure. What we're used to seeing is a standard induction motor as our external static pressure increases our cfm delivery decreases and that again is something that we've dealt with for a very long time it's just how these motors worked that sweet spot that half inch of external static pressure is where they generally and it's not written in stone but generally that's where they would deliver their nominal airflow the constant torque ecm motor and I'm going to say it's the more popular ECM motor because it's it's a cheaper product. Cheaper as in less cost, not cheaper as in its quality. The ECM motor that's known as a constant torque has a similar fan curve. It's not the same, but it's a similar fan curve to a standard induction motor. As external static pressure goes up, our airflow is reduced. It does this by maintaining torque. So essentially, if you look at the wattage consumption from a constant torque ECM motor, you'll see that it's wattage consumption because we pay for watts, not amps. You'll see that it's wattage consumption remains constant, hence the name constant torque. All right, with that explanation behind us, we're gonna press forward and we're going to look at a blower curve or a fan table whatever you want to call it for a constant torque motor this is from a furnace with a three ton drive notice i see air flows across here that are akin to something that would be a ton and a half and that's the misnomer of a three ton drive being always able to deliver three tons of, of, of air. I'm seeing some external static pressures here that are very normal pressures that we're going to operate at, and they're not deliver, delivering a lot of air. In fact, uh, with this product right here, when you get above 0.5, um, we no longer can get the nominal 400 CFM per ton on a three-ton drive. I am not pointing this out for any other reason than don't assume just because it says three ton, we're going to get three tons of air out of it, especially when we get to numbers that are higher than our required airflow. I really like to use this slide to demonstrate how things are not always as they appear from a nominal standpoint. Let's take this first blower table or section out of a blower table it's showing us that it's got a two ton drive and we get that from the the two four in the model number and i'm going to point out here uh, i had mentioned earlier or maybe you have heard the idea of again using nominal information half inch external static pressure should give us that nominal 400 cfm per ton but in this case it doesn't it's something significantly more. It's not that unusual to see a number that is on the opposite side of that, whereas in at a half inch of external static pressure, we might only see 700 CFM. Is it typical to see 400 CFM per ton at a half inch of external static pressure? Yes, it's typical, but it's not cast in stone. So again, it's one of those things where we always have to make sure we look things up. So for this example, 
I'm down here in medium high speed. If I was trying to run a two ton system at 350 per nominal ton, there you go. I'm right at 700 CFM. You know, I can see it's three CFM different, but I don't think we're going to kibitz about that one. So it's an example of we have to actually look things up and not go by nominal information. This bottom one down here is my favorite for explaining that high external static pressures aren't always bad. If we look, we can see we're at eight tenths of an inch of water column. That might be very typical when we have a three ton AC installed with an accessory filter where maybe we didn't have a lot of room. So we have a, a larger than ideal pressure drop across it. Same goes for our evaporator coil. We can start off with a nice big number like 0.8. We can have significant pressure drops, but still have adequate airflow. And we do that in this instance by using a piece of equipment that's got a four ton drive, but we're running it at what would be akin to a 400 CFM per ton target on a three ton system. There's your 1200 CFM. So I, I can't emphasize enough how important it is to look this stuff up and don't go by you know, rules of thumb. Rules of thumb uh, are not our friend in many instances. And with that, I am done, and I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Take care. Mm -hmm.